Okay, here we are at the Sportsman's Club, uh, starting our recipe for Cape Cod Eider. Uh, the first thing that we're going to have to do is we're going to marinate our duck breast. But I've learned over the years, as I said in other episodes, that people think that there's something wrong with game birds. So I've come with a unique solution for that problem. And what I've done is I've gone over to Shaw's and bought my 95% lean sea duck breast straight from the Mass Division of Fish and Wildlife. And you notice these duck breasts are regularly $150 a pound. But since I have my Mass Division of Fish and Wildlife frequent hunter's card, they only cost me $100 a pound. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to unwrap my fresh Ida breast. And remember, these Ida breasts are organic. No fillers, no pesticides, no nothing. Just straight, fresh from the, from the wild. And when you think about game birds and think about eating wild game, that's a critical thing for people to remember that these things have never seen the inside of a processing plant. There's my Ida breast. We're going to make a marinade. It's important when you're dealing with birds like sea ducks to understand that their uh, fat is not as tasty as the rest of the as the rest of the bird. This recipe is going to use uh, duck breasts that are boneless and skinless that, that, that I've, uh, I've done up ahead of time. And we're going to make a marinade now out of a half a, uh, half a cup of orange juice, four tablespoons of Cajun spice, and for this I use McCormick's Perfect Pinch. I'm not normally a fan of pre-made spices like this. I like to mix my, mine from scratch, but this is a particularly good spice for this recipe. It makes uh, an awesome aroma when it's uh, in the uh, refrigerator marinade. We're going to use four teaspoons of that, and we're going to use a tablespoon of, 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 of butter. We're going to whisk those all together. Get that uh, Cajun spices all incorporated real good into that marinade and then take each breast and make sure that you get get it good and covered and then we're going to set it aside at least overnight by doing the duck breast this way you're going to eliminate a lot of what people call the gamey flavor uh, and it's important that we we learn to do these things so that, that the duck breasts when they're on the plate look real good. They're, they're going to stay overnight. The next step that I'm going to do while they're marinating uh, is prepare the things that take longer, my potatoes and my carrots. What I've got here is some baby carrots and I'm going to put them in boiling water. It's been salted. And I'm going to start my uh, potatoes. For this recipe we're going to have uh, roasted baby potatoes with capers and rosemary. Fresh herbs make an excellent aroma in the oven and a real good look on the plate. So what we're going to start with is we're going to start with three pounds of baby potatoes. I like to use uh, the gold potatoes as well as the red potatoes for, for no other reason other than they look nice when, when, they're, when they're cooking. This is the longest part of the recipe. It takes 45 minutes uh, to do this. Well worth the time. So I've got the, uh, those. I'm going to start with a half a cup of virgin olive oil. And I'm going to drizzle that over the potatoes. Then I'm going to take three gower cloves that have been halved. And again, that's going to, uh, you're going to be able to smell those in the, uh, uh, while they're cooking. I'm going to take four sprigs of rosemary that I've, uh, I've trimmed of, of the stems. I'm going to take one and a half teaspoons of kosher salt. And I'm going to spread that nicely over the potatoes. And you can't be too bashful about getting your uh, hands in to make sure that everything's mixed up real good. 
and then they go on into a 400 degree oven for 45 minutes. That is the longest part of this recipe. While we're, while we're doing that, we're waiting for the carrots to, to cook. This recipe is, uh, you, when, when you're talking about the sea ducks, you'll find a lot of people that will tell you that sea ducks aren't worth eating. Those people are people that haven't bothered to go to the lengths that they need to to find a good recipe. This recipe is, it is an awesome recipe. It smells really good when it's marinating, and it's quick and easy to make. So we're gonna, now we're going to wait for the potatoes and the carrots to cook, and then we're going to start cooking the sea duck breast. The, the eider breast are, are gonna be, they're going to be taken out of the marinade. We're going to dry them. Then we're going to pan fry them in butter for three minutes a side. Then we're going to roast them in the 400 degree oven for six minutes. Then we're going to take them out. We're going to let them rest while we're making uh, a red wine sauce that's, that, that just finishes this dish, dish really nicely. So while, while we're waiting for this, we'll uh, uh, turn our attention to uh, the next part of the show. Okay, cut. Okay, we're good. We're good to go. We're back. We've given we've given our carrots time to uh, cook, and what we're going to do now is we're going to make what I consider to be a very very simple but very tasty dish. I've got my carrots coming out of the the pot, strained so that we're removing the water, and I've got a, several tablespoons of butter and two. The carrots in the bowl, we are going to mix them up real good. And then we're going to do, I want to spice them up a little bit with some dried mint leaves. This is a really simple and really elegant way to make your carrots much, much more aesthetically pleasing on the, on, on, on the plate. And they smell fantastic. And, and all it is is just dried mint. So that's your carrot dish, and now what we're going to do is we're going to start cooking the item. Into my pans, a couple of tablespoons of butter. Now I've got the duck breast which has been in the marinade. I'm going to take them out of the marinade, and I'm going to dry them off while the, while the butter is heating in the pan. You don't want your game to uh, be in a, in, in a lot of juice. You want a nice hot pan to get a good sear on it so that you'll have a nice looking uh, duck breast. And you can hear the, the butter is starting to sizzle. Drain that out. You want to keep that good tenderloin piece of the duck breast attached. We're going to do four duck breasts. Once we're done with them, here we're going to put them into a 400 degree oven for another six minutes and they will come out and they will be on the rare side. That is an absolute must for sea ducks. If you cook them medium or beyond, you'll be sorry. What they'll wind up tasting like is they'll wind up tasting like liver and not a, not a good liver either. So what we do is we marinate them overnight in the, in the orange juice and Cajun sauce. And, and, and you also uh, tend to uh, make sure that you age your birds. Don't eat them the day you cook them. The, these things, a normal bird that, that, that you're buying in a, in a restaurant has been dead for a, a fair amount of time before you get it. People think that if, if their birds have been sitting in the refrigerator for a week, they're no good. Nothing could be further from the truth. So what we're going to do is we're waiting for our pan to get warm. Now, somebody give me a sign when it's three minutes aside. Make sure that my pan, I like to use a non-stick pan, 
I look, like to use a little bit of olive oil on each side. And my helpers here are going to give me a sign when it's three minutes aside. Be careful when you're doing this recipe to follow the recipe carefully. You do not want to overcook your game birds. Eider is a big bird. They can, uh, a, a large male can, can weigh up to six and a half pounds. But you want the breast to be on the rear side. Then we're going to let it rest for a, a, another six minutes after we're done cooking it. To redistribute the juices and let those uh, uh, settle up. the gun. You want to follow this recipe pretty carefully for time and you'll be safe. So you've got a little bit of uh, experience behind you. Three minutes of side is just about perfect. I like cooking over a gas heat. A gas heat is a nice uh, uh, a nice heat that you can, re you can regulate. Three minutes on one side, and I'm going to turn and I get a nice, nice color on the bird. We'll do three minutes on this side, then we're going to put them into, into a 400 degree oven. Can't overemphasize the resting of the meat in, in in the in the cooking process. That it is it is an absolutely critical portion of this dish. Don't skimp on resting of the meat after you after you've got it cooked. The tendency is you want to smell very good when you're when, when you're cooking it. You're going to want to get right into it. Give it a few extra minutes. making a sauce in the pan after where after we get the birds out while the birds are cooking so we're not going to be we're not going to be doing nothing we will be making a nice sauce in one of the pans and that sauce again is is a critical part of this whole recipe we got a sauce with nice cranberry uh, sweet and dried cranberries which I think is an awesome part of part of our recipe Three minutes. We've got a little bit of time left. One of my burners here is a little bit more aggressive than the other one.
Once again, you'll notice a new attire here in the Game Glove A. A nice chef's jacket uh, to go with the hat. And I understand that, uh, uh, you know, I, I, I didn't have a nice chef's jacket like this, and I, I was a little bit jealous of, uh, of uh, Mike DeBonner at, at Mamma Mia's when I did the show with him. He had a nice jacket, and I didn't. And now I have the jacket, and he doesn't. So that leaves him with uh, uh, nothing but hat envy left because he didn't have the nice hat that I had. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take the breast off the, off the saute pan and they're going to go into the oven for six minutes. While we make our sauce. Okay, the sauce is two-thirds of a cup of red wine. Balsamic vinegar. And I'll consult my recipe on that rather than tell you the wrong answer. It's a third of a cup of balsamic vinegar, two tablespoons of sugar, and to give it a nice local flavor, we're going to have our sweetened dried cranberries. Sweetened dried cranberries are a uh, uh, great thing to go with game. I've found over the years uh, that they are uh, they have a nice sweetness to them once they're, once they're dried they eliminate the tartness and they go very good with any of these game birds. We're just going to do a little bit of a reduction of this sauce. My friend Ron Warwick has done a lot of the prep work for us today. We have uh, my son Jeff Johnson on one of the cameras and Ron on the other. Uh, both of them are veterans of the game gourmet, having taped previous episodes and, and helped with us. This is a new recipe for, for me. This is only the second time I've made it. I, I spent uh, several hours on the internet looking for a recipe uh, to tame uh, the challenge of, of, of cooking sea ducks. But if you listen to the advice of people like your, your, your guide, uh, Jack Renfrew, uh, you'll find that he, he'll, he'll tell you the same thing as the, the, any experienced sea duck hunter will tell you. Don't go over medium red. six minutes. Okay, my assistants have, uh, are telling me that they, they're diligently timing the six minutes on the on the 400 degree oven. A little bit inexperienced with this with this oven. The back burner was a little bit more aggressive than I would have liked, but it didn't, it didn't overdo. And you can smell that balsamic vinegar and the red wine in the, in the sauce just makes a very nice smell to it. A lot of recipes that I use use red wines uh, uh, to make uh, gravies and sauces. The hardest thing about a lot of these recipes is allowing the, uh, the game birds or the meat to rest. Uh, I thought I was going to go out of my mind at Mamma Mia's waiting for Mike's venison tenderloin to rest. Uh, I was tempted to, to run over and tackle him and take him eat the venison tenderloin before it was ready, but I'm glad I waited. It was worthwhile. One of the things that I, I, I think that most hunters don't do uh, enough is they don't pay attention enough to presentation when, they, when, when they're cooking game and presenting it for, uh, for people to eat. Uh, you can't just slather it on a plate and it, it looks like something that uh, uh, came out of the garbage can yesterday and you eat it and expect it to look good. 
This particular recipe looks real nice when it's sliced thin with the sauce over it on a nice uh, uh, plate it up with your carrots and your uh, potatoes. Uh, it would, would, would be something anybody would be proud of. And that's, uh, you know, the presentation is important in game birds. Uh, a lot of people have uh, preconceived notions about what's good and what's not good. And if you present it right, you, half the battle is won. In my, in, in my oven, I've got uh, my potatoes, and I've got to add my capers to the pan. Give those a good shake. And I've got a couple of sprigs of rosemary as a garnish. Go in the pan. That gives me just enough excuse to peek in on the Ida breast and see how they're doing. They say a wash pot never boils, but it's hard, it's hard not to watch. Okay, we're coming up on the six minutes. Jeff is giving me the high sign that we've got, we've got our six minutes up. And we're going to take... Our Ida breast right out of the oven. Now all they need is time to rest. And I'm going to do that for six minutes. Okay, we need another six minutes on the timer, uh, which we'll we'll do. And I'll take uh, I'll take this time to explain also what we do about dessert. This is a recipe for a chocolate raspberry tart that I got from uh, Bon Appetit magazine. That goes great with game. It's simple and easy to make. Anybody can make it. it it's a simple chocolate tart. The recipe will be on uh, www.carvesportsman.com under the game gourmet. It, it, it's a chocolate tart made with raspberry coolness that is a great finishing touch to this meal. You, 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 it's enjoyable, it's easy to make, it doesn't take all day, and, and it's restaurant quality uh, dessert. So we're going to have that for dessert today here at the Game Gourmet, and we're going to find that we can do almost anything professional chefs can do if we try out enough. I don't think I'd want to be doing it every day, but and what the next step is going to be is plating it up. We're not just going to throw this at people. Get a couple of plates. We're going to slice the breast across the, the uh, uh, grain so that uh, it, 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 it's, it's going to make a nice presentation. You're not going to see any evidence that this was ever a game bird. It would be no different than if you would walk to Shaw's and got, uh, got, got this out of the meat case. Minted carrots. Our 
of piping hot potatoes. That rosemary adds a very nice, the rosemary and garlic adds a very nice aroma and flavor to the potatoes. And, and again, it's not difficult. There's nothing difficult on, uh, uh, about this recipe that we serve here on the Game Gourmet. I don't, I don't like myself to spend hours and hours in the kitchen. Uh, I, I enjoy eating, but I don't enjoy spending days and days on the preparation. waiting for is the sign that we've got about six minutes done. And they don't seem to be cooperating and again my nose and my stomach is trying to rule the day and I have to keep uh, keep my big Swedish mitts off those uh, Ida, Ida's until it's time. Like we've got another two minutes to go, so we'll just be, uh, we'll pause for station identification. The game, today's game, Gourmet, is brought to you by Cape Cod Idas. Uh, hunting Idas off of uh, Chatham for the first time in, in, in my life, something I've always wanted to do with my two sons, Dan and Jeff. Uh, Dan came up from uh, Texas for the hunt, it was the day before Christmas, and enjoyed the day. Uh, how many people can say that they went to Chatham, Massachusetts and spent the day on the beach? in late December. Uh, but that's exactly what we did and we had a great time. Uh, I'd like to thank Captain Jack Renfrew uh, for, for giving us both a successful hunt and a very memorable hunt. It's one of the things that he likes to, 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 to brag about. Uh, I've known Jack for several years now having uh, worked with his sons on the youth uh, uh, turkey hunt, the youth pheasant hunt, uh, and have learned that uh, I won't compete with anybody in his family in terms of uh, getting big game or a lot of it. His, his son Grayson uh, bagged a 23 pound turkey uh, on, on one of our youth turkey hunts and, and that, that would be accomplishment enough if he didn't do it with a bow and arrow. Uh, and I'm sure that uh, the skills of his dad are passed down from father to son and they, they, Grayson did a great job and we were, we were thrilled to hear here that uh, he was successful. His uh, Jack's dog has, has almost 6,000 retrieves under his belt and if, if you stop to consider that a lot of those retrieves because he's hunting sea ducks are done in December and January that is an awesome accomplishment. Uh, the, the dog swims right out to retrieve the ducks in, in the cold frigid water and current. The, the dog doesn't care. He's having a great time. He's just uh, comes back and if you give him a couple of pats on the head that's all he needs for pay. Okay so it's it, it's time our uh, six minutes is up and now we can slice the items and then ask the guys with the camera to do a little bit of close up for us. Okay here okay what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to cut across the grain this way, and we're going to make them eighth to eighth of an inch thick slices with a good sharp knife. This is key to the presentation of this dish. You get nice football shaped slices of meat, and they are on the rear side. And again, if it's not on the rear side, you're not likely to like sea ducks. They get very, well, I guess the only way you can say it is they taste foul. In a minute, I'm going to show you what those slices look like. That's a slice of, of, of Cape Cod Ida breast marinated in orange juice and Cajun spices and cooked to perfection. 
because we followed the recipe and trusted in the people that put the recipe together to get it right. This time, Ron Wolk is going to get to eat with us. That'll be a new experience for him. Ron was with us at, uh, at, at Mama Mia's and didn't get, didn't get in on the eating because he had, to, had an appointment, we'll call it. <laughs> okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to dish this up. And, and again, what I'd like to do is I'd like to make sure that everybody sees that the presentation is, is everything. That's Cape Cod, Idaho, and it doesn't look like game. You can see the, the, the sweet and dried cranberries over the top. So that's plate one. Another breast. You'll have to forgive me if I sample during the show. This, this was a very pleasant surprise for me. I went in with very low expectations uh, of what sea duck was going to be like, and to tell you the truth, I, I, I think this is one of the, uh, is, is really good. It's not just good, it's really good. The Cajun spices aren't, aren't hot, hot. They're, they're spicy, but not overwhelming. They don't overwhelm the flavor of the duck, and you'll find people, so we have four Cape Cod Ida breasts today. The texture of these birds is just perfect when it's cooked to this, me this uh, medium to, to medium rare. I would say you want it on the favor the rare side and that those Cajun spices make a, a, a great outer crust on this meat that uh, almost like a, a like a good cut of beef. I'd say if you cook your items this way you won't have it, nobody will have any beef with it. Okay. One more, and we'll adjourn down to the and there's your there's your potatoes. Nicely done. Nicely done and easy. There's nothing difficult about this dish at all. If, if, if you went to, if you went to a restaurant and get this dish, you'd be happy with it. You need that on the plate. As the as the Phantom Gourmet says, a dish worth driving to. If you let the rest, the, the breast rest a little bit, you'll find it also slices quite a bit easier than if you try to cook it while it's searing hot out of the oven.
balsamic vinegar also adds quite a bit to the to the flavor of the sauce. Joining me in the game button today is my son Jeff Johnson, and uh, in the tradition of the game gourmet, we want to put a plug in for a local uh, purveyor of wines, Plymouth Bay Winery. Uh, it's worth a trip over to Plymouth Bay Winery. They're local, right over in downtown Plymouth. And this is one of my favorites, is their Cranberry Blush Fruit Table Wine. And I'd like to tip my hat to Mr. Larry Bean from North Cava, up on High Street, because today, Larry, the Game Gourmet has real live glass glasses, not paper cups. Thank you, Larry. <laughs> so we're, we're, we're going we're gonna to dig in. To our, uh, to our Cape Cod Eider and try to remember all the good time that we had out uh, with our sons and in some cases uh, sons with fathers uh, remembering that uh, hunting is as always a family sport. This, this recipe although is Cajun it doesn't have any of the Cajun napalm that we had in our duck gumbo. It's, it's actually not hot at all. It's a little bit on the spicy side, but it's not hot and it doesn't, uh, it leaves a nice uh, clean taste in your mouth. We've used, as always, not only the, the uh, uh, Cape Cod, uh, the Cranberry Blush wine from Public Bay Wineries, We'd also like to remind you that we use the services of a local outfitter for this hunt, Captain Jack Renfrew. And Jack did a great job for us. Uh, it was worth every penny that we, we, we put out for the hunt. You can't pay for those kind of memories. And I'd like to thank Jack for his efforts, and I'd like to thank his dog for some outstanding retrieves. And being out on the beach in Chatham this time of year is quite an experience for anyone. Dessert today we have our uh, uh, chocolate raspberry tort, which is a simple and easy recipe. Although we didn't go through making it, we're going to put the recipe on uh, cabasportsman.com. I would encourage you to finish off your uh, your game supper with a nice recipe like the chocolate tort. It's just a crowning achievement for a, for a great meal. Jeff will be joining me at the Cava Sportsman's Club for our annual game supper this coming Friday night. A supper with good friends and good food at the Sportsman's Club. It's our, it's our, annual, it's our biggest annual fundraiser. We have a lot of fun doing it. For those of you who are interested in finding out what, what game cooking is all about and how to do game nicely, uh, someday you ought to make a trip down. It's the last Friday in January every year. We have as much fun putting it on and eating as we do uh, any other event during the year. My thanks to Ron Warwick and my son Jeff for doing the taping today. As always, I'd like to remember in signing off today, remember when the gunning stops, the game gourmet stops right here at CATV.